What's up everyone, it's Mike Sherrard and welcome to my video podcast series where I interview top realtors and entrepreneurs from around the globe and show you their story from zero to achieving massive success in their industry. Let's get into it. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of the From Zero podcast video series. On today's episode, I am so excited to have Delroy Gill from Denver. Now Delroy is in an influencer group with me on social media and this guy is absolutely amazing. In this video, we are going to take you guys through his journey to becoming a top luxury agent, how you can break into the luxury market, and even how you can get your first luxury listing. Not only that, but how he leveraged a passion to build his brand and his business online, all the while balancing, growing, and establishing an amazing family and so, so much more. Make sure you guys stay to the end and don't miss a beat. This episode is jam packed with so much awesome content and I am so thrilled to share it with you. So let's introduce you to our next guest. All right, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the From Zero podcast. And today I have a super special guest that I'm more than stoked to have on here. And this is Mr. Delroy Gill, all the way down from Denver. So as mentioned in the introduction, this guy is a luxury agent slash men's fashion icon that is absolutely killing it, but got some really neat insight on how to balance family, how to get into the luxury world, and ultimately how to crush it as an agent. So Delroy, thank you, man, for hopping on here. How's it going? How you doing, man? Happy to be here. Excited. Um, I'm just out in one of our show homes now that I'm trying to get sold, but um, I'm, I'm excited to give you all of the information that I have in my brain and lay it all out on the table. That's fantastic, man. You're looking sharp as always, so nothing short of the usual. <laughs> I love that, man. Yeah, so let's dive in, give people a bit of an idea of your story before we get into specific questions, but let's take us all the way back from where you started back in England and then where we are today as a top agent crushing it in Denver. Yeah. So um, originally from London, England, uh, moved to Denver officially um, 11 years ago now, um, but had been visiting um, for almost 20 years now, back and forth from London to Denver. Um, but I've, I, I am a big city guy coming from London. I'm I'm a city all the way through and through. So when I first came 20 years ago, it just culture shock and everything happened. And I was like, you know, I want to go back to messy streets, crowded roads and grumpy people for a moment Um, until until my wife was like, are you crazy? You need to get back um, to Denver and, and have some peace, calm people that are smiling. And we got mountains, blue skies. So... Um, after a while, I was like, yeah, let's move back to Denver, got to Denver. Um, my background, when I first got here, I was doing um, quite a lot of internet marketing, um, but for real estate agents. So that was kind of my transition. I was just looking for a job. Another guy who was the head of IBM marketing um, said, hey, do you want to you know, sell these websites, learn about software? So I was like, sure. Um, So we ended up doing that. We got together and he kind of just trained me up and came from a very, very corporate background, whereas I was very much just entrepreneur my whole time, never really had a full-time job ever, always just had my own businesses. So it was good in terms of it was a one-man band camp and me, but then he was like really showing me processes from a corporate side that I had never seen before. Um, So he taught me about sales funnels. Long story short, we built that business up. We were going around the country um, and really just showing agents how to generate business and revenue through the internet. Um, So with that happening, I I thought I would do it for a couple of years and then become a real estate agent. 
was killing it so much for so long that we ended up doing that for about seven years. Um, and then from there was like, um, the recession kicked in and I was like, yeah, this, this seems like right now would be a good time to start doing real estate. And everyone was like, you're crazy. All of the real estate agents were getting out of the business. Um, and I just saw opportunity. I said, everyone's jumping out. I know that these tools that I have and I help these agents work. So I'm going to use them for myself. Basically started doing real estate, generating leads online and did short sales for about three years and then kind of transitioned that same database and clientele into who my, basically my clientele and sphere of influence um, is now. Um, and now I, I mainly work by referrals, but that's kind of how I built my business is implementing all of those processes that I learned, you know, generating that core um, database and now transitioning it to what it is now into the luxury market, which is obviously a whole nother animal. Wow, man, that's amazing. I had no idea. And that's kind of ass backwards from where most people start. Most people start as an agent and then they do everything under the sun to try and learn online marketing and sales funnels and things like that. So you yeah. kind of had this foundation of knowing how to generate leads before even getting into the business. So that's kind of neat that you had a bit of tech behind you and not just the personability, which you evidently have, and you're able to leverage that. And, you know, I think it's cool that you also, similar to me, started in a recession because I'm, a, and I'll let you speak on this, but I'm assuming that you kind of have the mentality that if you can start when everyone's getting out and you can thrive when the market's down, what's going to happen when it comes back up? Oh, totally. I mean, really for me, I didn't even, you know, it wasn't something like looking back at it now, I think like, wow, I was crazy. Like, I, I was, did you lose your mind? Like, because going into it, one, like learning the transaction part of real estate, like my first interaction with it was doing short sales. I literally didn't know anything else because that was just the market that we were in. So Again, I thought it was just normal. So now getting to the point of my business and not having to save homeowners from losing their homes, you know, showing up and being with them on the dining table and the family's crying and I'm having to coach everyone through that really, really traumatic time and paperwork that's literally this thick dealing with the banks. I honestly thought that was normal real estate. So when the market did shift and I look back, and like now people are like, how do you remember all of your deals that you're doing? And how are you doing 15 deals here? There? I'm like, Bro, do you know what I did before? <laughs> I have no idea what I was doing before then. Because this to me is easy now. So now it's way easier. I have new challenges now and new things I have to tackle. But actually, transactionally, that's, that's an easy part of real estate. Negotiating with an individual or an agent when I've dealt with banks who are nothing to do with actually real estate and have no idea and having to negotiate with them is, is it's night and day. So transactional, I can handle a lot of transactions. Now I just figure out marketing and what avenue I want to go in, which is my new challenge. That's fantastic, man. I like that you say, you know, you kind of were brought up in people questioning what you're doing because similar that's, that's something that I can relate to. You know, I left engineering when I was thriving there and I got into real estate. I was talking to Stu from our influencer group yesterday, explaining that we have 14 months of inventory right now and only 30% of homes are selling. <laughs> so everyone's like, what are you doing, man? What is going on? You had an epic job, this, that, and the other thing, but I don't even think about, I don't even think about, I don't know anything different. I don't know what it's like to be in the exactly. Yeah, Yep, exactly. Right? So I think it's crazy. Like, sure, the, the stats paint a dirty picture, but man, this is where people like us thrive. So the next thing I kind of, this leads into, which is fantastic, man, is how did you go from doing these kind of savage deals when the economy was in a recession to being now, even from your, your, optics one of the top luxury guys especially in your city you've got the look you've got the sales you've got the listings how do you go from there and what do you recommend someone who's getting started how do they break into the luxury market if that's something they want to play in yeah um you know there, there's there's obviously a lot that goes into that well just 
because of the way I got into it. So I had literally only a year and a half ago, less than a year and a half ago, I just transitioned to being with Liv Sotheby's International Realty, wow. which is the company I'm with now. Prior to that, the, I had only done one luxury deal prior to that. So been in the business for years. I mean, I, you know, like uh, a 900,000, 950, you know, I've done higher end deals, but never 3 million, 5 million, you know, it's a whole new world. So I, I met with the VP of that company randomly one day, just um, at a restaurant. And she's like, you should speak to our company kind of, you know, we, we think it will fit with your brand. My visuals on IG were nothing like that. I was who I was. I'd never just, I'd never really pushed that side of business because I didn't have a need to. And I was doing well. And I was really mainly a lot of, I did have business coming from like Facebook and, you know, I would post stuff on, on there. Um, but when I came over and, and I went in there, I, firstly, when they were having me come um, to the company, I questioned it myself. I'm like, just because I'm with that company, and if you're in the real estate business, you know, like, realistically, the buck stops with you. Everything in your business and everything that we gain um, through this industry realistically comes from us. Um, there is going to be support and there's leverage that you can use from your company, but you have to know how to do it. Um, so I didn't know what they had for me to even use. So just going through that, it was kind of a nerve wracking thing. And I was like, you know, how, how is this going to work for me? Um, so crazy story, I ended up deciding to take the leap, just change company. Um, and I saw the value in the brand and I thought, I just, I see the value in the brand, but I've got to make sure when I get in there, I'm able to leverage it and use it to the fullest extent I can possible. So I got in there, I kind of just, you know, fiddled my way around for a moment, you know, seeing how everyone works, what's here, who's doing that, what's going on kind of in the surrounding and in that pool of the industry. Because once you, again, get into that luxury market, that pool gets a lot smaller um, of agents that are doing that amount of business. And I'm not the person that's going to be like, oh, I'm going to try and go after that agent's business or, you know, I'm going to go, you know, where I'm like really trying to beat somebody else. Like I'm in competition with myself. I'm trying to do what I need to do. So how am I going to stand out from the crowd from, let's say there's 10 agents that are dominating the market and they're the ones that have all the business. How am I going to want some of those clients or that sphere of that energy of that market to want to work with me versus me going after the business. So all of the time, my mentality every time when I'm doing everything to do with marketing, it comes from a standpoint of attraction. I have to do my business and my market in a way that somebody says, Oh, Hey, what, what, what's that guy doing? Like how comes or why, or, you know, I want them to reach out to me versus me going after the market. And that way you're going to get the energy. You're going to get the type of people that you want to work with. Because if you're putting out certain energy, the people that like that, you're going to work with them. So you, if you want to work with positive people, we put out positive energy, they're going to be attracted to that. So I just had that, that hat on just to give you a background. That was the hat that was on my head when I was putting together my marketing. So then I then thought, okay, let me test the brand. I needed to just make sure I made the right decision. And is this brand known? So the first two months I was at the company after I kind of figured all this out, crazy story. Um, I went on Zillow. I searched every property that was a Fizbo's, which is a for sale by homeowner in case anybody doesn't know. Yeah. Um, that was above a million dollars. So a homeowner that's selling them ho their house, their sales, which is in the luxury market above a million dollars. And there was like nine of them, which I was like, holy moly, there's like a five million, six million, a three million. They're selling it themselves. And I'm like, I have all these tools with these, this new company. Why, why would they not choose? So I ended up calling one of them. The first one, I picked up the phone. I called them. It was a $3 million um, house right down the street from where my office was. Called them and I said, hey, this is Delroy with Liv Sotheby's. Um, I see you, you're trying to sell your house yourself. You know, have you thought about, um, listing it with an agent? She's like, thank goodness you called me. 
I've been waiting for Sotheby's to bring some buyers by my house. Why haven't you called me yet? Can you come over next week? I was like, I definitely can come over. <laughs> <next week." laughs> so I went over to her house. We built a rapport. And by the end of it, that was my first ever luxury deal. Put my sign in the front yard, $3.25 million listing, five minutes from my office. Um, so I was like, wow, okay, the brand kind of works. And if I do the things like nobody else was calling that person, but I'm not really that way inclined where I'm going to go after and call expireds or Fizbo's, but I just wanted to test the brand. That was the only reason I did it. So from there, went back around and then I just started putting all my marketing together and said, okay, people already see this brand as luxury. I now need to mold it into who I am, be authentic to myself and elevate myself as high as I can personally to match the brand and to offer the same amount of value, but in a personal way. So I wore suits every day. I already had, you know, some funny kind of cool pictures on Instagram. But I was like, okay, so if I, I'm, this is what I'm doing, I'm just going to take it up a notch. I want to wear a nicer suit. I'm going to have better pictures. I'm going to post better quotes. I'm going to send out better marketing material. And I'm going to put myself in a position where, not that I'm faking it, like I'm going to post stuff and talk about stuff I'm not doing. I'm literally going to talk about what I'm personally doing in the highest level possible. So whatever you're doing, if you just do it, it's just like customer service or when I, when I called somebody or whatever I did, I made it the verbiage that I used. I got a professional writer to make sure everything was at the highest level possible. So that way, walking into an appointment, everything already was to me what they expected and to what I would expect as a person that was coming to sell me a luxury home. Did they follow up before they called? I... I didn't even have an assistant at the time. I would have my office, um, like my office receptionist. If I had an appointment, I would say, hey, can you go down, meet this person, greet them and tell them I'll be down in a moment. Again, just to create that level of service so they felt welcomed as soon as they came in, I would then go down and greet them. They would make sure the receptionist knows their name and says, you know, hey, hey John, Delroy has been expecting you. So all of those layers, I just tried to cram the highest amount of service into what I was offering with my existing clientele, with my already existing clientele. And so they started visually seeing me in a new space and then in turn started referring me new business from a whole new channel. So that's really in a nutshell what I did and how I was able to kind of garner this new um, business that you see me doing today. That's amazing, man. There's some, some really neat nuggets in there that I didn't expect. So just to recap for, for everyone, you know, my takeaway from that is, you know, with your brokerage switch, it's essentially surrounding yourself with the people that can help you and be that catalyst to get you there. It's yes. also looking at opportunities within that space. Now, unfortunately, here in Canada, it's illegal for us to go after FISBOs and expireds. Oh, wow. But, you know, as Delroy said, you know, you can go after those in the States. And similarly here in Canada, what I did to get some luxury listings is I just door knocked or cold called these luxury communities. Because just like you say, man, the conversation you're having with someone that owns a $3 million house is the same conversation you're having with $300,000. People get this intimidation factor because uh -huh. of wealth but I know that you'll probably resonate with this. What I learned is people actually almost have more respect at the upper echelon because they respect effort, grind, and hustle, largely because they had to work their butts off to get there. So when they see someone putting in that extra effort, you know, they, they have that respect and credibility, whereas sometimes on the lower end, they almost don't appreciate what realtors make. So there's almost some some angst there from day one. So I love that. And then what you said about embodying the highest level of yourself. And this is something that I try and preach to people is quality. And again, when you build yourself up, not bigger than you are, but as big as you can be, the confidence you have going into things is on a different level, whether that be the content 
or how you dress or the listing videos, everything, you performing at your highest level separates you so much from the rest of the competition. And it helps build you up there because, you know, similar to, to what you're saying there is I go up against top agents who are 10, 20 years older than me longer in the business, yes. but I walk in with the confidence that I'm the king of this city and you'd be doing an injustice to yourself to work with anything else. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Definitely. And that's, that's happened to me several times. And I'm just like, you know, this is because I, and then when you do stuff like this, you start realizing what you're personally capable of because you're pushing yourself to the limit, right? So now you're doing things that you didn't know that you could do before, or you didn't, you know, you're, you're in spaces where you know nobody else is. Like I know some of the things that I do, a, a social media or video, or now I've been trying to get personal videos for myself that I can get a higher quality and different types of marketing strategies for this house that I use on myself personally. And I can offer that to the client. And I know no other agent who's been in the game for 20, 30 years that's, you know, an old dinosaur kind of coming into the listing appointment is going to have to offer. No, wow. no way. So that's that value for me offering that is, is beating them nine times out of 10. I love that you say that, man. And dinosaur is actually the word that I use all the time because, <laughs> you know, what I tell people is even as a young agent or a new agent, with the people like the dinosaurs who've been in the industry, they become complacent. So when you're the one doing the extra listing video, you're the one marketing on Facebook and they're checked out just servicing their database. You have so many touch points to have this competitive advantage over them that you can beat them time and time again, man. So that's awesome. I want to ask about your, your play in the, in the men's fashion world. And then I'm going to tie all this in, a, in, in a really neat way. So, What's the deal with you and, and men's fashion? Because clearly you dress well. I see you at these events. You're associated with people on Instagram that are, are these fashion influencers. Where did this come from and how does it become part of your business? Yeah, um, so I think it, it's obviously, it, it's kind of ingrained in who I am anyway, just coming from London. I've always been into kind of style um, and clothing and brands um, and different things like that. So in school in England, we wear, I think it's like that in Canada too, but we wear actual school uniform every day, blazer, shirt, tie. So that's just been a part of who I am anyway. Um, but then with it coming into my business, I think when I was just working through that and becoming more elevated in it, I'm like, I wonder if there are more people that are into this as well, like other than me. So I started an Instagram page um, called the Denver Gents and basically ended up finding out that there's way more people um, that are into this stuff than just me and just kind of organically that grow, in, grow into an actual charity organization that I accidentally founded and now we help the youth. Um, but it's just all men who are into fashion and, you know, the store that I shopped at originally where I was like, this store has that little extra touch that is different at um, a company called Suit Supply. Um, and so working with those guys and, and even them, they had a whole vibe and a style that was different again from the actual market here in Denver. And I was like, yeah, that's the kind of energy. Again, it was just an energy thing that we all were like, this is the kind of energy. Everyone was really looking for it. It just wasn't housed in one place. Yeah. Um, so again, by accident, I housed it in one place and it just grew. Right now, we have over 100 members in our organization. Um, so it's a bunch of dudes that are into fashion. So now it's not a competition, but it's now a place where we're like, we feel extra good that we know we can get, go to that place when it's a Denver Gents event and we're all dressed up. We create an impact. We're raising money for kids. It's just all around a good, fun experience experience um, and it's something I already enjoyed doing so I incorporated it more again into my pictures my social media so just by doing that again I didn't plan to be an influencer I don't put influencer in my bio because I'm a real estate agent but brands do still reach out to me they you know hey do you want this if you post a picture here or you know that type of stuff um, so I ended up by default just working with them and, and doing different things locally 
because again, I, I like helping other businesses. They, I refer them business. They refer me business. Um, and I'm supporting, you know, entrepreneurs, which is what I am as well. So it just kind of all came full circle of everyone just kind of helping each other grow. That's amazing, man. I love that it came together in an organic way, but I think it's special. And for everyone listening to note is that, you know, Delroy found a passion and leveraged that to find his comfort zone, but bring people with that common passion together. And that can in turn drive business. You know, that's what I do with cars. I am in the car community. It's a common passion similar to what you have with the Denver gents where you can go talk to someone from any walk of life, any business industry, and it doesn't seem like you're going to ask them to buy or sell a house because you have a common passion that you can talk about. It doesn't matter if they're worth $40,000 or $4 million. You have something that you can talk about and you came together around a common ground, which then organically drives business. It's yeah. not forced. It's something that you embrace. It's already a part of you. You're just bringing people together. You're not saying, you know what, damn, I should start rocking a Tom Ford suit and try yeah. and get in that upper echelon. It's like, no, if, if you actually, if, if a person actually does that, it will fail. Yeah. It will 100% fail. You can't, that's why I tell people, it's not a fake thing. You can't just say, oh yeah, because people in this market are wearing suits, I'm going to wear suits. If you're always the jeans guy, like I can tell, I know when you're a fashion guy, like I can see, spot, and like, look what you know, like that guy's a car guy by, I don't know, the mods or whatever he's done on his car. I can tell by the way you tie your tie, the way you lace your shoes, the way your suit's cut. I know if you're just wearing a suit or if you're into fashion, it's two completely different things. So yeah, you gotta find what you like and then just make it a part of you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Otherwise you can't, don't just try and throw on a suit or go buy a Ferrari because you'll just be a weirdo with a Ferrari. It doesn't, you know. Truly, doesn't man. Get- so that's, that's amazing. One thing now I want to tie the fashion into the real estate is quality. You know, you can tell from looking at your page or looking at your listing videos and even looking at your apparel and appearance, you have an emphasis on quality. And one of my biggest pet peeves in this industry is when people take self taken iPhone four freaking photos and it like, and they, you know, people don't, focus on the right things. And I want you to touch on, you know, what quality means, not just on one aspect of your life, but as a whole, because clearly you've tied it into all aspects of your life and having that congruence and that consistency speaks volumes. And I know that that's had a positive impact on your life from your social media channels, all the way to your listing presentations, your business and your videos. So break that down a bit. Let's talk about quality for a sec. Yeah, um, quality is like, I mean, it is going to set you apart Im- like immensely, immensely, and not even just on an appointment, but as a whole, as your brand. Like, your quality is to do with your absolute brand. And these days, like, first of all, anybody trying to do any type of business these days know that it's a full brand. Like, whatever you're doing, if you don't have a brand behind it, whether it be tied into fashion, cars, suits, cereal, whatever it is, it, it's got to be some type of branding behind it. And if your quality is like dollar store brand, you're going to get dollar store clientele. If your quality is, you know, Nima Marcus, you're going to get Nima. People go to where the brand aligns with them and not just because of the pricing. Sometimes people mix up like quality with price. Like when I first started doing all of this, I was doing it completely on a budget or doing it for trade of services or doing it, you know, there's ways to navigate, still get the same quality where you're not breaking your pocket. You know, my videos, I could get my same quality of video and pay someone 5,000 or I could pay 500 or I could trade for it. It just depends on who you're working with and you know, what your vision is of how you want it to be. So Don't mix up quality with it being a price point. You can get dope quality for a reasonable price and just package it the right way and get it out to your audience. And and the packaging of it completely sometimes is, you know, what stands it that once you have it, how you package it together and deliver it to the public is a whole nother thing 
um, in itself. But when I first started doing this, you know, I, I actually was using an iPhone, right? When the iPhone came out with portrait mode, this is a story I've never even put out to the public, but I'll tell you this. So when I first started doing my IG, I was like, man, I don't, I, I don't want to spend $1,500 or $1,000 on a, on a camera or, or even have a thought that I would like hire a professional photographer to take pictures of me or whatever it may be. Like I was below that mark in where I thought the quality needed to be, okay? But what I did know is I wanted the quality to be there. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get the new iPhone, whatever it was at the time, and I'm going to use you know, make sure, because the thing is you can get quality on the iPhone, right? But you got to make sure you've got the best lighting, the best time of day, the best angle. You got to make sure everything's perfect. So it almost looks like, and, and now I can tell the difference, but you can get really crispy pictures. But some people are like, oh, I'm just going to take a picture of my iPhone because iPhone got good quality. No, that's not. It's going to look like crap if you don't have the right lighting. So you can start there, but no, again, Knowing the quality and what you want to deliver is one thing. So as long as you have it, so I used to, the story I'm going to say is when I first started posting pictures, I literally used to have a tripod and an iPhone and I would drive around town, literally put my, my tripod up, stand next to a brick wall or wherever it may be, or outside of front of a house and just take a picture of myself. Like I would just take a picture of myself. It was all me doing it all of the time. And then what ended up happening, I was going to different events and I thought, oh, there's, there's professional photographers at events and I'm at the event. Take a picture of me. Hey, can you text me that picture right now, please? Hey, can you send, can you email me that picture? So wherever I would go, and there was a professional photographer, I would have them send me the images. I was like, sweet, I've got tons of images. Now I can just use these and they're real images of where I was anyway. And then I was like, wow, I can really tell the difference between my iPhone pictures and the professional pictures so i was like i need to figure out a way to get the professional pictures done so i just did i booked a shoot on like an up-and-coming photographer i searched on instagram locally he was really cool and then the guy someone referred me the guy who was taking my real estate pictures and was like i want to get into doing like portrait stuff so he's like i'll do you a really good deal and he was a dope photographer so he started taking pictures of me so it just started elevating more and more and more. And actually now I probably get hit up by videographers and photographers that want to shoot pictures of me for free more and more and more and more. So if I wanted to now, because my leverage of building the brand up is way higher, people know if I post a picture and I tag you as the photographer, you're probably going to get business out of it way more than you may be doing now if you're an up and coming photographer. So again, you can just leverage and build your brand up to where you basically trade for service. That's fantastic, man. A couple, a couple of big takeaways. Again, you're speaking like to the same tune that I am is, you know, with quality and we'll talk real estate first is you can get quality on a budget, but I also say that, you know, apply that quality to every price point because what I hate is when people will take average photos for a $300,000 listing, but baller photos for 3 million. What is going to make you stand out is when you have, luxury quality across every price point because then the ones in the middle range which has actually a higher turnover which more more sales at the end of the day they're yep. flabbergasted by the fact that they're getting this quality they're getting twilight they're getting they're getting this at that price point so when you can find ways to apply that across the board that again is going to level you up and, and help you stand around others but I love what you say about just getting started, man. I still to this day use portrait mode with the right lighting and the right things like that. But just starting, you know, when I started, the first photo shoot I ever did, I DM'd a guy on Instagram because he got featured on a hashtag. He was local. He did a hundred photos and a six hour photo shoot for me for $50. Because he's like, yeah. I told Boom. him, I was like, listen, man, if this works out, this is my drive. We are going to be in this together and this will not be the last business have it as a journey along the way. So yes, you know, ask for a deal. Don't be afraid to reach out to these up and comers, like you say, who are also looking to make a name for themselves. It's a win-win. And then yeah. over time, you can start investing money, but you don't need to have this deep pocket budget in order yeah. to get started. It's a matter of getting started. Think creatively, use your resources, things like this freaking phone, 
and go out and just do it because taking action. And then as you can see, you'll see Delroy's photos, go back and look at my first photos or my first videos and you'll see a night and day difference, but it was just getting started. And yeah. that's a big thing for people to learn, man. So I love that you preach and that. And side note on what you just said, Mike, on mine, you can scroll back. I deleted all my old photos, but just know I had some crappy ones up there a ways back. There were a bunch of pictures up there that were now not up to the quality of my brand. So I deleted them. But yes, we all go through it building up to a certain point. Definitely. I love that, man. I was showing my girlfriend the other day. One of my first photos is a picture of a luxury staircase and I photoshopped my logo into it and a motivational quote. And that's what I was posting for the first months of real estate. And it's like, if I did that now, man, I get DMs all day long being like, what is going on? But it got the ball rolling. So guys, rolling. just get start. No, just start. Yeah, definitely. And you can, and you, and you'll see the people that are starting that are trying to do it and you can see like, oh, they I see what they're trying to do. Yeah. And then, you know, they can tweak it. And then you see the people that are just doing it, like with, which is like without any effort or rhyme or reason behind it. Like you said, they, those are the people, they'll just take an iPhone picture, just post it up, whoever cares, like whatever. And then you can see the people that are trying, they got the captions, they've done everything needed. They're just not at the level yet. And you just got to build it over time. Big time, man. And, and yeah, so the next thing I want to ask, and I didn't mention this beforehand, but this is, this is one that I really care about and I know is near and dear to you and to your heart. How do you balance growing at this rate, having the Denver Gents, doing everything that you're doing, but also maintain such a healthy family life? Family is so big. We both know that it's one of the most important things in our life, regardless of what's going on, business or anything, everything else is secondary. How do you balance your business life with this beautiful family that you have, man? Thank you. Um, married for 15 years and I've got three kids, so everybody knows what Mike's talking about. It's not like I'm not just a one-man show. Um, definitely, I've got what I call a big family now with a, a new baby that's well, not new now, two years old, and then a 13 and an 11 year old. Um, but yeah, I definitely think every, all aspects of it, right? Business growth, family, like I really, I have to have one, the separation, which again, at the beginning was very difficult. Cause like when you get into that whole entrepreneur and you're in beast mode and like, you're just go, go, you're like, I'm never missing a call. I'm never saying no to a listing appointment. I'm going and showing a house at 7 p.m. Um, I think we just kind of, you can get burnt out very easily. Um, so just through training and, and just educating myself more and being around people that are, were implementing different forms of balance or going to training seminars that had, you know, talk not just about building your business, but they incorporated things about life balance and learning how to how to do it you know it's a, it's not a thing probably especially people that are entrepreneurs i don't think we're we're not automatically wired to say yeah i'm gonna just separate my life and my my personal life from my business like it's just all one thing to us so i've had to just take baby steps and implement um rules within my family and my structure um like for instance one of the things that i do is when i do get home my cell phone will get put on charge when I get home for two hours. I won't check my phone. I'll spend family time. We'll laugh, we'll catch up, we'll have dinner. Um, and I'll make sure I'm fully present at that moment um, in time. So, you know, it's small things like that. When I don't have any business for the weekend now, I'm not like, I'm going to the office still because it's Saturday just because I'm, you know, I'm the hardest working guy and I'm going to find some new business today. I'll be like, I'm thankful that I don't have any business and I'm not stressing out. So I'm going to spend the day with my family today and just have that moment where it's, you know, I'm going to enjoy that time and not be worrying about business. Um, so there's just a lot of things that I implemented slowly to get that balance so that not that I'm there because before I used to be there, right. But I'm on my phone, I'm texting, I'm replying, I'm getting calls. Um, so now I just implement hours where I'm going to remove um, that energy of that workload 
and just be present um, for a moment and laugh and have fun because it's actually fun hanging out with your family when you're, you know, everything, everyone's together, everyone's present. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I absolutely love what you're talking about there with your family, man. I'm going to hit you with two things that I think are absolutely fantastic. The first one I think you're going to take away. What you say is there's no such thing as balance in life. And I agree. I'm going to tell you what it's about. When it's about a recipe. Now, if you look at a chocolate chip cookie, there's not 25% flour, 25% chocolate chips, 25% sugar. It's a mixture. There's not yeah. going to be equal parts of business, equal parts of life, equal parts of play. That just does not exist for the entrepreneur. It's about a balanced mixture of things. And you know, as your business gets systemized, maybe you dial down that portion of the ingredient and up the family portion, but it's never going to be split into equal quarters. You have to understand that life is a recipe it's not about a perfect balance. And the next thing I love what you say is, you know, being present because there's a vast difference from being with your significant other, but worrying about what the next text message is going to say. And I had to do that too. And what I found is actually last year I was doing 18 to 20 hour days, seven days a week. This year, when I actually scaled back the time, but was more effective and productive in those shorter hours, and actually enjoyed my break, I was so much more mentally prepared, I was so much more productive, and my business doubled this year because I actually had more of a balanced recipe in my life. So, love you say totally. that. And it, and it really, one of the things that resonated me uh, with me a lot was when, when I actually, for a short period of time, I had, a, I had a personal trainer, I was pretty heavy into fitness, working out a lot, um, but, I would work out with a personal trainer for 30 minutes and I was, my ass was kicked. And I was like, man, sometimes you go to the gym for an hour and a half, you know, you're like working out, you think you're working out, like you feel good after it. And then you're like, I'm dripping with sweat. The next day I'm so, my legs are in pain. I'm, I'm dying. I don't even it was because you were, like he was holding you accountable right there in that space and you just was go, work, 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 work. Like you said, if you, and then, and then I started thinking, wow, if you could do that, I'm working, I'm just going strong. In the two, same thing, like I'll just cram it and just go so hard. Same thing with the family. Like you just block off that time. It's nothing else. It's harmony, it's peace. You can talk about whatever. I'm not going to go to the phone. I don't even, even now, like with my social media, people see me actively on social media. Like when I post, especially something that I know people, and I'll post it in a way that makes like people talk amongst themselves on my page so that there's just interaction going on. And it's like, oh, something's happening with Delroy. And like, I might not even reply until like the end of the day after I've had my family time, yeah. because it, it, like if I stood there replying to 50, 100 comments all the time, like it would just consume my whole day. So I just post up, boom, I post it, I'm out of there. I'm on, like, I'm, I'm just gone, I log out. I don't have no notifications for social media at okay. all on my phone. If all of it is turned off. I don't even know when something happens. I'll have to go back and find it and see if it's worth posting on, but most of the time it's not so i just keep going same here man i love that so i know you got to get going we got to wrap up here two last questions i'm going to hit you with one what is your most recommended book in 2018 and two what should we expect from you going forward well the the the, the, the most recommended book is the miracle morning mm -hmm. um, by uh how i mean that that book literally like it was like a like there's a few times in your career you go through things and like there's a, an entire mindset shift like at first when people were telling me about it, i was like man i'm not really like that get up in the morning da, da, da. like i'm not that guy like why am i reading that book but it wasn't even that's not what the book is about after i really read it it was more about a mindset shift and and about implementing small things and it and it makes it into a miracle morning and that changes the rest of your day 
completely just doing things like affirmations, meditation, reading, like quiet time. There's just so many pieces of that book that are, are massive. So that's definitely my number one book um, that people should read. Um, and then going forward, what should people expect? Um, definitely my podcast. So people like Mike are inspiring me to launch a podcast. So I'm getting into that arena. Um, definitely more, more business and business growth and sharing more. Every time I grow, you know, I want to share the knowledge and information I've learned. And sometimes it gets overwhelming, like doing the one-on-ones and, you know, trying to have every phone call and, you know, answer every message. So I want to have platforms like this where you can share um, as much as you can. So I'll be creating things like PDFs. So if, if there are agents that want to get this type of information and, and they want it there in a, in a PDF format, they'll be able to download it. So a lot more information I'm going to be sharing is, is what's coming up in terms of my business is definitely taking it up a notch and, um, I know a lot of people think print press and, and magazines and, and news is, is maybe dead, but I actually am a believer in that it's, it's definitely very, very present. It is just maybe not who you think was reading it. Like our, maybe my generation is not reading it, but there's a generation that's still very into magazines and there's companies that still thrive on print press and not for the readability is for the brand recognition and that type of stuff. So I'm getting more into that space and just awesome. elevating my brand um, more and more to the highest level. That's amazing, man. I'm so stoked. So guys, I'm going to link that book below. Also, once Delroy launches this podcast, I will go back and link that below. So nice. man, and Mike what, will obviously be on my podcast. Exactly, guys. So stay <laughs> tuned for that, man. What an awesome time having you on here to chat, guys. I hope you learned so much. And there's so link below what your biggest takeaway was because we learned how to break, not only break into the luxury space, but how to get your first luxury listing, how to find your passion and leverage that to build business, how to balance life in the sense of meat ingredients and having the right mixture all of this from this awesome guy from denver who has a big bold and fucking awesome personality so delroy man thank you so much again for joining on and teaching these people how to go from zero to being a luxury agent peace out thank you for having me right on signing off guys thanks again for tuning in and we will see you in the next episode so there you have it. I hope you were able to take something impactful away from this interview that you're going to be able to apply to your own life. Please comment below what your biggest takeaway was. And if you have anyone in mind that you think I should interview next, thank you for tuning in as always. Please make sure you subscribe and we will see you next time.